really hard. It was like, intense. But you yeah. know what? It taught us so many lessons. It really did. I feel like, like, especially when you live in a city like Toronto, there's like so many distractions that you can spend your money on. And there's also like a level of like keeping up with the Joneses. Mm. Like you need to like, Mm-hmm. like live a certain lifestyle mm-hmm. but it actually hinders you Digs and you then a bigger hole yeah. yeah yeah right and it's not until you like make some like a huge sacrifice mm-hmm. like we did like it was so drastic but we realized that we, wasn't actually getting us closer to getting where we wanted to be which was to own a home. own property mm-hmm. in toronto i don't remember what t- time but we decided that we were gonna we were gonna like move yeah we wanted to downsize in order to save for a down payment. Cause we yeah. always said like, we want to own property in Toronto, but, but we like, never actually did any, made anything, anything about changes. it. Like, I don't right? know. Like if we were just we were thinking, thinking something, it was going to be like, here you go, Sabins. Like, here's the house. <laughs> like that's not how it happens. You have to make changes. You have to make sacrifices. Yeah. And that's exactly what we did. We made huge sacrifices. Yeah. Huge you, can talk, sacrifice. you guys can talk about sacrifice. Cause they're- <laughs> Look, I get it. The Toronto real estate market is confusing. Whether you're a new or experienced investor or just looking for a home to raise your family in, join us at Broadview Table Talks as you sit around the table with my friends and talk about the real estate and the ever-changing market in Toronto. Guys, welcome to another edition of Broadview Table Talks. Today, we got special guests here, outside agents, past clients, new investors. I'm really excited. Yeah. Michelle, Kamaya, Amoy. I'm so excited for what you guys doing. They're TikTok Hello. famous, by the way, too. That's kind of <laughs> <laughs> You gotta tell me about that. Yeah, we're excited to be here. Thanks for All having me. Right. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For joining. So let's talk about a couple things today. Okay. Mm-hmm. Real estate investing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We want to talk about your social media. Okay. Acting career, maybe. I don't know how it all relates. Maybe a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, it totally does. Yeah, totally does. Yeah, it does. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. 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 Lead generation. What else do you want to talk about? Um, we Let's actually see. made like a little list. Oh, private lending. Well, private lending. Private lending. Private lending. About that today. Let's do it. Mentor and student. Even though you're Ooh. unwillingly our mentor. Um, I don't mind. Uh, wait, what, what is it called? Oh, um, analysis paralysis. Analysis paralysis. Yeah, that's a good one to talk about. Uh, yeah, I think, I think that's, that's all. That yeah, I think that's it. Where's the list? Where's the list? It's on the, on the oh, notes out. Okay, cool. <laughs> let's do it. Let's do it. So first of all, um, congratulations for your amazing journey. I can't believe you guys are doing that. That's awesome. You bought Thank your first you. property a couple months back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. January, January, January. Early January. Early. Yeah. yeah. It was like January, January 7th. Started. Yeah. Actually, so I feel like, should we say how we met you? Sure, let's do it. Okay, so, well, I I guess we have to go, like, way back to, like, the start of the pandemic. Okay, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, let's do that. Whoa, whoa, sorry. You guys chime in. You guys chime in when you you want to. (laughs) But uh, essentially, uh, I'm a single mom to Kamaya Mm -hmm. and Amoy, and um, I would say, like, I grew up pretty, I don't know what the word is, but, like, disadvantaged. I also had no financial education whatsoever, Mm -hmm. Um, and it wasn't actually until the pandemic that I was like, oh my God, like we have this income, but like I'm completely financially illiterate. And obviously with the pandemic, everyone's at home and like, you're not doing anything. A lot of time to think. A lot of time to think. (laughs) And um, I just started watching YouTube videos on money. That's like how it started. And and then from there, like I started this YouTube channel and like (laughs) just started learning about like debt and just- Mm -hmm. um, Like mama was obsessed. I'm not even kidding you. She started, I would send myself to YouTube school every day during the pandemic. And you would listen to, um, whenever you were in the shower, you wouldn't listen to music. You would always listen to like- Podcasts or YouTube. Videos. Or those, those books, yeah. like what were they called? That Rich really dad, good. Rich Dad, Dad Poor Dad. Audiobooks. Yeah. Audio books. Audio books. Yeah. 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 Rich Dad, Poor Dad was like life changing for yeah. me. And then you listen to the audiobook too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so like that was it. Like pandemic was huge for us. Mm-hmm. And then um, I guess from there, we're like, okay, we lived in a really expensive condo, mm-hmm. which was nice. It yeah. was a really nice condo, yeah. a really nice view. But we realized that we, wasn't actually getting us closer to getting where we wanted to be, which was to own, a own property in mm-hmm. Toronto. And um, yeah, I think we, I don't remember what t- time, but we decided that we were going to, we were going to like move. Yeah. We wanted to downsize in order to save for a down payment. Cause we yeah. always said like, we want to own property in Toronto, but, but we like, never actually did any, made anything, anything about changes. it. Like, I don't right? know. Like if we were what just we were thinking, thinking something was going to be like, here you go, Sabins. Like, here's here's the house. House. <laughs> like, that's not how it happens. You have to make changes. You have to make sacrifices. Yeah. And that's exactly what we did. We made huge sacrifices. Yeah. You, can talk, sacrifice. you guys can talk about sacrifice. Cause they're right. <laughs> ultimately like, yeah, like you as the parent, you have to make the decisions, but your kids kind of have to go along with your crazy decisions at some point. And that's yeah. kind of what we did as a family. So. Because we moved moved from a nice, nice condo in a nice area nice in area. Toronto. To Toronto? Toronto to <laughs> Toronto. literally the, ti- the tiniest, I'm not even kidding. two bedroom place like in a in not, Scarborough. 
Or well, can I, we can't hate. No, scar- no, 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 Scar- no Scarborough slander. No Scarborough slander. No slander. This is just, it was, it, it, it wasn't a nice view. No. It wasn't our, a nice our, view. Our lived in a wind tunnel. <laughs> yes. yes. Our well, lullaby our, was the, um, what is this? The, the, the LRT. The SRT. The yes. subway. Yeah. Um, our balcony have would a room. shake. Yeah. Yeah. It just wasn't oh, yeah, a good so you situation. Lived in the living room too. Yeah, yeah. I didn't have a bedroom for that whole time. So, uh, because it was my crazy idea, I was like, okay, come on, you can have your own rooms. Like, so mm-hmm. come on, we each got their own room Sacrifice. and yeah. And then I slept in the living room. I got an Ikea Frihitin <laughs> yes, from, from, from Facebook marketplace <laughs> for like 500 bucks. And I got a foam topper off mm-hmm. Amazon for like 150 and every single night and every single morning I set up and put away that yeah. couch. No, and it was so hard though because every morning, like obviously we had school, right? But mm-hmm. mama is literally sleeping. The kitchen is like here. Oh, Mama's bed is yeah. like right, right there. Beside. That's crazy. So we would have and to, like, you were so filming quiet. for like a few months yeah. out of that so, too. Kamaya was getting up at like five. five. And then I would like quietly like make a little breakfast and then she would be like, shh. but no but those like those few months like of course like it was worth it because now we're homeowners Mm -hmm. but like it was really really hard yeah yeah like it was really hard we were like it was just over a year we lived there for over a year yeah yeah Yeah. and that was like also the height of covid so like you're not Mm. we're not going out like we're just in the house 24 7 stuck with each other nowhere to go like literally mama didn't have a room yeah it was really hard it was intense but you know what it taught us so many lessons it really did i feel like like, especially when you live in a city like Toronto, there's like so many distractions that you can spend your money on. And there's also like a level of like keeping up with the Joneses. Mm-hmm. Like you need to like, I don't know, like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like live a certain lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Um, but it actually hinders you. Digs and you then a bigger hole, yeah. yeah. Yeah, right? And it's not until you like make some, like a huge sacrifice mm-hmm. like we did. Like it was so drastic, but it, it humbled us in a way totally. and it taught us really big lessons and I'm so grateful that like my kids got to learn this at an early age because yes, mm-hmm. they will never make the same mistakes that I did <laughs> seriously right yeah um but I feel like those are lessons that we can carry on now and now we're so disciplined when it comes to money like if we have a financial goal we're gonna we're gonna make it through we're gonna, we're gonna sacrifice happen, hard yeah. work or or whatever because, I like mean, by any means necessary when you think about it like we already made like the ultimate sacrifice yeah. living in that condo. Like yeah. anything else now is like, yeah, it's easy. It's like, easy. Yeah. yeah. Anything compared to that. Yeah. 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 Easy, right? That was awesome. Yeah. So you met cave on through. Mutual oh plan. yeah. So once yeah. we actually <laughs> saved up the down payment money, yeah. we're like, okay, next step first in my mind, I was like, okay, it would be unwise to, cause we went through so many different avenues. Like, are we going to purchase something that we're going to live in? Mm-hmm. Are we going to move to Hamilton? Even at one point we were going to yeah. buy in Windsor, Windsor yeah. and rent yeah. it out and live in Toronto. Um, but then, yeah, I was, we were just like at each other's throats all the time. Cause obviously the pandemic and like such a small space. So I just looked on, I forget where I looked realtor or wherever I looked mm-hmm. yeah. and I found one of your guys's lease listings. And I was like, yeah, let's just reach out. And I remember like my initial email was like, I see you guys have a YouTube channel. I have a YouTube <laughs> channel too. Nice. Um, and then, yeah, we ended up meeting Kayvon and, and we went to look at this townhouse, which we live in now, but it was yeah. like, yeah. even that was like back and forth, back and forth. Mm-hmm. And then he was kind of like, oh, like, you know, after chatting with him and like, talking about our situation, he was like, okay, you guys have this money. Like, why don't you do a pre-construction? Mm-hmm. And to be honest, like, I think we thought about that, but like, we didn't Very put briefly, a lot of weight on yeah. that yeah. at all. Like we were more we into like, actually resale. looked into it. Yeah. No. Yeah. And then when he said that, I think like within five minutes, we're like, yeah, okay. Yeah. Let's yeah, like, do it. I, like we, we got back in the car and we were like, yeah, yeah. we're doing this. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause it allows you to save your down payment, right? Over a few years in addition mm-hmm. to that. So mm-hmm. it really helps you amplify more, right? Totally, nice. totally. Yeah, a hundred percent. And like, I think that brings us to like analysis paralysis, which mm-hmm. we were talking about, mm-hmm. like, because there are, especially when you've managed to save like a lump sum, mm-hmm. but There's, even in Toronto, that doesn't even really <laughs> yeah. mean much, yeah. right? It's a big city, yeah. Yeah, yeah. cause like That's you, it. if you're buying something over a million, you need to put 20% down and like, then you need to qualify and all that stuff. So like, I think like when you're, pose with like that many options you just need to make you a just decision. need to make yeah. a decision especially like in this market you yeah. can't you don't have time to think and like oh well i don't really see anything i like maybe i'll just wait yeah. like you can't do that you just yeah. have to make a decision yeah and I that's think what that's, we did i feel like like i view that as like an ed not an a 
as like a positive thing about us. Like we don't, I don't know if it's like a little bit of like, n- what's the word? Na- naive, naivete. 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 You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like, I just feel like uh, we're like, yeah, okay, good idea. Let's do it. Let's yeah. just do it. Yeah. Stop thinking about it. Just do it. Mm, I yeah. think that's, that's kind of like our life Have you motto. always been like, super conscious and comfortable i mean uh, like taking your time to analyze analyze everything or were you always just jumping into things all the time no well, def- i think we lived like honestly like as a single parent especially in a city that's expensive as toronto you don't really have that um luxury mm-hmm. of like that yeah. you're just living in survival mode yeah. like all yeah. the time yeah. so i think especially because our financial situation changed like pretty quickly that like you know what how do i even describe like what are, what are you trying to say? I don't even know anymore. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, like, well, we, because we, have maybe, the luxury, no. we didn't have the luxury of making decisions no. like this before. Mm. It was just, yeah. Yeah. We're living. Yeah. And then when our financial situation did change and we could like think like, okay, now we can actually purchase a property. Mm-hmm. I think we pr- learned pretty quickly. I'm actually yeah. really grateful for the pandemic. Like as much as yeah. I hated it, mm-hmm. like the pandemic definitely woke us up when it came we to finances. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, well, smart move. And, and then we guys. met you. Yeah. 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 Like our initial meeting with you, like we got back in the car and we're like, Canada's we're like, been put in well, our life for yeah. a reason. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was yeah. literally <laughs> what happened. We got in the car and that is what was no, said. Really that is did. so cool. Thank yeah. You. Thank you. So I'm glad I was able to share things with you. Um, what are the questions would you have? So you were asking a couple of things. Um, mm. Okay, well, number one, sorry, number one. Um, <laughs> first of all, we're doing private, li- we're, we're, the private mm. lending is working mm. out. Okay. Yeah, no, 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 he has a deal from us coming this week. Sweet. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so we're gonna do that. That's gonna be really We've, fun. We did Sweet. go through with the corporation. You can put this in your little thing or not. Um, but we're doing that. We did open the corporation mostly because it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> do you know the advantages of having a corporation at all? Like, um, like for tax, no, why for tax tell us? like we, so our accountant is the one that said, okay, you're going to do private lending. Why don't you, why don't you, um, open the corporation, open a holding, a holding company. Yeah. Yeah. company. Yeah, sure. So that's what we did. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I think because like, sure. Now we're like relatively small fish. We do have visions mm-hmm. of it growing bigger and like oh, yeah. other things that we're going to ask you about today. Mm-hmm. But yeah, we did. We started. Yeah. So started well, the whole company. company, like I'm not an accountant or anything. Right. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. but from what I know of it, it's more so for limited liability and yeah. also for retained earnings as well too. So if you keep the profits, I mean, you still have to pay taxes on the interest income and it's pretty high, right? Okay. It's the highest type of interest income that you can oh, have. Wonderful. So talk to, yeah, I know. <laughs> talk to your about that. Um, but having the corporation get, you get the benefit of having the retained earnings. So if you don't, withdraw if you leave the money in the corporation you still get taxed on what you make oh. but after that you leave it in there the retained earnings yeah. for the following year you pay the minimum marginal tax on it but then eventually you can keep it in there right without being taxed whereas Ooh. if you kept it personally you'd pay the income tax yeah it, right and then yeah. it's income oh. right? so okay. it depends on which bracket you are in the personal income side it may or may not affect you but the, it's more so i find more important for liability of getting sued for example so if it's a right. if you're buying mm-hmm. into a partnership into um you know, buying property with partners. Mm-hmm. Which is what we want to talk to you yeah, about. We, that's, yeah, that's, yeah. Right, so I have a separate yeah. company for that because, right. you know, there's situations where, you know, death, divorce, things like that, right? Or you get sued or whatever. Yeah. If your partner gets sued, like your, your business partner you're investing with, you don't want that to affect mm-hmm. your other personal assets. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. You want to keep that sheltered within that mm-hmm. company. Wait, totally. so even though we started this company as a holding company, like if we were to go and like start, uh, say, purchasing like, multi-unit buildings or something sure can we do that under the same company you can do it under the same company i'd probably keep it separate i'd probably have that holding like company an umbrella okay hold another company god oh, and, and that okay. yeah okay. now the problem with like all your this little stuff, your spider web oh yeah, yeah sure, is that yeah, what it is oh, yeah. kind of like that yeah yeah okay. oh yeah yeah, yeah. Wait, so is your number one a holding company yes like your top one yes That's so my company. real estate income flows up to the holding company and that yeah. holding company can do invest in, invest into other uh, things, right? Okay. So there's advantage of that. My accountant is like way more smart than I am. So he yeah. does, he tells <laughs> yeah, me all yeah, these yeah. things. Um, but ultimately, yeah, like you, it's it's good to do that for retained earnings at the end of the day. And I can re, reinvest almost like pre-tax income, I guess, right? Mm-hmm. Without taking the tax personally. Nice. Okay. So nice. it kind of stretches a little bit more. There's advantages and disadvantages, like I said. Yeah. Um, I do have some partnerships with some other people and those are in separate yeah. companies as well too. Mm-hmm. So again, but under if, your holding. Under the whole company. Yeah. yeah. So if, uh, well, it's more, but so, they it doesn't really separate. matter if it's under the whole company or under my personal. It doesn't really matter. Okay. It's more so that I get to invest pre-tax income towards that. Right. right? Okay. So yeah. um, that, that's a nice benefit. Got but it. it's more so that if they ever got sued, then it won't attack, it won't affect my other properties. Yeah. It's more important. So if you're concerned about tenants suing you, 
Mm. Someone was just asking me today at the bank. It's pretty funny. I was telling her that if you hold under a corporation and you hold a property under a corporation and you're afraid of like a slip and fall or something, they're suing you for a million bucks or whatever. Mm -hmm. That's what home insurance is for. That's what landlord insurance is for. Yes. So that will cover you in that aspect. I wouldn't do a corporation for that purpose. Okay. Because with a corporation, you have to pay an extra fee for accounting, like for rent keeping, Mm -hmm. for incorporation, things like that. And it could be like another couple grand just for no reason at all. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's what I would say about incorporations. Okay. Okay. Got it. All right. What else? Okay, so our big question today is the big looking question. into the future. So, mm-hmm. so you are an inspiration. Thank you. Yes. 100%, you like genuinely. Yeah. And, um, I love all your TikToks. <laughs> I do, I really do. They're so creative. So we're going to talk about that in a second. Hey, we're so trying to get that TikTok buddy to invest more into real estate. Yeah. There you go. There um, but so, okay, I guess our question is, looking into the future, mm-hmm. there are... Like, let's say condo developers, for mm-hmm. example. Okay, let's just look at condos. How do, how do you do that? How do you do that? To develop a condo? Yeah, yeah. how do you yeah. become a developer? Develop anything. Develop well, there's anything. there's different scales of development, right? Yeah, exactly. So let's take condos, for example. Like a condo building? What would yeah. be lower yes. than a condo? Okay, well, if you say condo developers, like the ultimate, right? There's yeah. obviously other developers mm-hmm. past that. Like you could do communities i guess you could say you could do multi condos mm. right mm-hmm. um subdivisions things like that yeah. but if you did less under the condo you could do a small first of all there's different sizes there's a high-rise condo exactly. there's mm-hmm. mid-rise and yeah. low-rise you're yeah. still going through the same development process same rezoning process mm-hmm. same entitlement process yeah it's a lot of work and a lot of money right and a lot of risk too who is you- money yeah uh, okay so how do we how invest do more into real estate without using our own money that's our question yeah we would like to use other Someone people's money. money. Okay, so oh, I got I, I this from Robert, Rich Dad Poor Dad. Okay, so OPM. No, I'm not even going to. I follow a girl. I follow somebody on um, TikTok, Instagram. Oh, She's on TikTok from London? too. Her name's Bag oh. Afari. I okay, think. whatever. Awesome. So she's awesome. Other people's money is great. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Having the leverage of that, but it's a huge responsibility. That's okay. We're okay with that. Meaning that you're. First of all, you have to get the trust of your investors. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, so, so I was like, oh, so we need okay. to start small. We need to like start managing something. And then like, this is like 20 years into the future, right? Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. We have, okay. we have a lot of time to do this. <laughs> okay, awesome. <laughs> so, um, yeah, if you're playing with other people's money, I, I think you have to watch it even tighter than you watch your own money. For Just sure. Because your reputation is on the line. Mm-hmm. Yeah. First of all, you can upset, you can mess up somebody's life. Exactly. Right? If they're trusting you with it and yeah. you know, you lose all the money for them, right? It's yeah. a big responsibility. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I would say, yeah, that's way more. So how do you start own. small? How do we start? How do we like, start? how do we get our like foot we're, into the yeah. door to yeah. being eventually, developers? Eventually doing that. Like how would we do that? That's such a big question. Um, other people's money, first of all, you're using banks' money for a mortgage. That's a, the, yeah. the basic definition of other people's money because essentially you're using institutional fund money, RSPs, whatever, government money, you know, mm-hmm. um, to lend to the bank, which they in turn lend to you at three, four, five percent, whatever, six right. percent. So you're really only putting twenty percent down, five percent down, ten percent down, whatever it is, twenty yeah. percent down. Let's just assume, mm-hmm. yeah. right? Um, and the other eighty percent is other people's money. So that's mm-hmm. kind of the basic of it, right? Okay. But even if you're talking about getting people to lend you the extra twenty percent, yeah, like yeah, at the yeah. super super high level when you're building condos, you have people investing to funds. Like there's a lot of developers out there that give you funds and they, they, they guarantee like a 15% return. So is this similar is. to what we're doing with the private lending? Mm, kind of, kind of, okay. kind of. That's more for smaller scale depending mm-hmm. on which project you're doing. Yeah. So a lot of developers like to do fix and flips, right? Where if you secure a property, they, they only they bought the property, whatever it is, maybe like assuming that's their money through the bank's traditional mortgage, whatever. Yeah. They're using your money to do the construction, for example, right? Okay. So the guy that I introduced you to, he'll secure it based on the appraised value mm-hmm. and make sure that you're safe. So generally they'll lend up to 85% loan of value or sorry, 80% loan of value. That is that meaning 20% down. Yeah. So in case anything goes wrong, there's that 20% buffer. Like if mm. the market drops a little bit or okay. there's fees, you know, yeah. selling costs, all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, renovations, vacancies, all that, that 20% in theory should be able to protect them or protect you as an investor to mm-hmm. get your money back. Right. Right. If you're borrowing up to 100 percent or even higher than 100 percent of what it's worth, yeah, then you'll never recoup that money if they stop paying. Right. That makes sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So from there, um, you're lending them money, so on looser underwriting policies, and they're able to do what they do. They're paying interest only on the payments, and it's high interest, so you you get to benefit as well too. And then after that, they'll refi that out 
through a traditional mortgage once the value goes up even higher. So say, it's like, say they add another uh, you know, story to their building or to a mm-hmm. house maybe, and now it's worth more. They added more square footage. Mm-hmm. They subdivide the lot and made it into two lots, two houses, and you can yeah. charge a little bit more. So that's another way to increase value. Yeah. Right? And then um, now they get a reappraisal. They get refinancing. It's called takeout financing and they or cash out refi, a whole bunch of terms you can use. Mm-hmm. But basically they're cashing out your loan at a cheaper rate. And now they get to pay you back. They take their profits and they just, you know, rent it out or whatever. That's, that's another way to do it. Um, so with other people's money, what else can you do? So a lot of the bigger institutional guys that build condos, mm-hmm. like these development firms, mm-hmm. yeah. they have private capital behind them that lend them money, right? And they yeah. give them like a 15% return, whatever. But they're doing it, the number makes sense because they're getting multiples on the returns. Right. So they can't afford to do that, right? Yeah, and they have yeah, the experience yeah, yeah. to do this. So. Yeah. Kind of that makes sense a little okay. bit. Mm-hmm. So they have people invest in their fund. Their fund will be, that'll be their down payment, I guess you could say. Right. Mm-hmm. And then the rest of it, they go to the banks to get the funding. funding for okay. Right. Yeah. Wow. It's an A lending, a schedule A, schedule B, like, you know, yeah. B yeah. lender yeah. or whatever, private lender. Mm-hmm. There's different levels of underwriting. Mm-hmm. And okay. the, the, Looser so the policies are, the big more level of trust with some yeah. people yeah. with yeah. big pockets. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. I'm like, sorry to say, like if we try to raise capital to build a condo today, it's going to be really impossible. You might get a couple people, yeah, like, some that's true. people yeah. invest in you, but like mm-hmm. yeah. you're not going to get public money. First of all, yeah. that's illegal. You need a license for that, right? You need a license to mm-hmm. be able to raise capital like that for public okay. money. Wow. But for people that you do know, mm-hmm. um, yeah. it's possible to get some friends and family to invest in, a, say, a flip or something, right? Even let's like, say yeah. you bought an old mm-hmm. condo, right? Mm-hmm. Somewhere in like I don't know a, a Another area that has a lot of, like even in one of these older buildings here. Yeah. Say you buy it for 500000 but then everything else around that area is going for 800000 Right. Mm-hmm. Right? Say you put in 100000 after yeah, land transfer yeah, tax yeah. on that, another 100000 Yeah. And yeah. You're, you're, you, you finish the project at, call it 650, Yeah. 750 or mm-hmm. whatever. Right? And then if you sold it and you actually net 800 or whatever, right. then that fifty grand is profit, right? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. That's that makes true. sense. So that's like mm. the smaller scale. Yeah. yeah. You can do the same thing with like, it's called the Burr method. I'm sure you guys have heard of that. Yes. Buy, refinance. No. Wait, yeah. buy, renovate, refinance. No, buy, renovate, <laughs> rent, refinance, repeat. Yeah. Right. Okay. So um, you can do the same for, you know, single properties, such mm-hmm. as a condo, as mm-hmm. a home. You do it for duplexes, triplexes, mm-hmm. multiplexes. You that's can subdivide Yelena lots. Yeah. 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 What she do? Uh, triplex, duplex. She, no, she first, she started with a condo. And she bought it really cheap and she realized that renovated units in that building were going for like X amount over what she did. I think she put like 30,000 into it Mm -hmm. and she made, I think like 50,000 profit. And then she put it into a house that she renoed and like, she's badass. She did those renos herself. Yeah, Yeah. herself. Yeah. 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 And now she's building. Yeah. A building? How big of a building? Uh, No, just like like building like a single Single family home. There you go. So yeah. the way to increase value would be, the, the best way, obviously, is to increase square footage. So yes. in a condo, it's very hard yeah. to do that. And that's why you're kind of limited to the upside of it. Yeah, you're based yeah, on yeah. what, you know, you're buying. It's like, almost like, truthfully, the whole game of real estate is truly like Monopoly. The yeah, game. that's what we love. Yeah. Yeah. The, core. At the most yeah. simplified level. That's yeah. all it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? And when you land on it, you rent. I mean, like, whatever, right? You're yeah. Paying mm-hmm. yeah. So they pay down the mortgage. Same mm-hmm. thing, right? Um, I guess when you increase density, that's where you really add value. So in condos, you can't do that. Right. In mm-hmm. houses, you kind of can with a certain degree if you're with the, within the zoning bylaws. Right. Right. And sometimes you can push those levels a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes you get exceptions and there's like exceptions basically. Right. Yeah. And then when you do it on a larger scale. Yeah. Obviously you scale. Right. So yeah. that's why yeah. it's worth millions. Right. Because it's right. scale. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Wow. That's a lot to take. This is it's putting like a lot into perspective. I'm like having like brain overload right now. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I mean like for us, it's like, okay, we have this condo. We're doing mm-hmm. private lending this week. Yeah. Which I think we're getting like an 11% return, which mm. is really good. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we're excited for so that. Fun. And the reason that we're doing that <laughs> is, really like, is really Yeah. Is, but like yeah. the reason is because we're like, okay, should we like- for anything that we'd actually want to live in, we're going to have to spend at least 1.5. Yeah. Right. Anything, no, yeah. That we would want to live in. Yeah. So, but like, I guess like our question is like, what next? Like, what do we do now? It's almost yeah. like, like, what you want. Uh, yeah. What, you want. what? Okay. Well, we just want a real estate empire. We want a real estate yeah. empire. That's why we were thinking like being developers now. <laughs> it's like a lot of work. I don't know why, what I thought. Like it was going to be this super simple thing, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe like just more, 
or like houses yeah, for you have, now. You have like, like quantity, right? You have you have a lot have of stuff a, going. Yeah, on. I mean, I've okay. also been doing this for seventeen years, right? So yeah, like, that's oh, true. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> we're like a few months in. Yeah, right. <laughs> like okay, <laughs> we are the next Gupta group. To group. <laughs> so like. <laughs> I'm telling you, every single millennial that I work with <laughs> thinks the same thing, whether it's no. real estate investing or the career or whatever it is. Yeah, right? yeah, so yeah. A lot of people, like, you have to have patience in this game. Right. It's all about first, like, anyway, it's about the long term mm. time in the market, spending your time. Yeah, it's hard time to in the market. Overnight, like, the so people you see on TikTok, Instagram, all that stuff, they make it look sexy, you know? And it is <laughs> yeah. sexy. Don't get me wrong. Over time, it is. Mm -hmm. yeah. But just keep grinding, keep working, make mm -hmm. money the way you make money. Yeah. Whether it's in your regular jobs, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And then, pour it back into investing. So investing is saving and that's, use the compounding yeah. effect. Use yeah. That's leverage. what I'm thinking. Like keep doing this private lending and then, and then we'll have enough. I have a have couple enough. things to say about private lending. Like okay. I introduced you as a really good friend of mine. I've invested, I do invest, actually I still mm -hmm. have some money with him for private lending, which yeah. is great. 11%, 12%, 15%, whatever. Sounds yeah. amazing. 15%, Generally, you get those deals when they're really shaky and they're really scary. So I wouldn't, I would stay away okay. from that. Okay. percent you're still pretty good. By the way, when good. he sends me the deal, I'm going to send it to you so you can For sure. make sure. He's a good friend of mine. I do trust him. So like, I do yeah, trust yeah, him a yeah. lot, right? Yeah. Um, but ultimately, the bad thing about private lending is that you get taxed pretty highly on dividend, dividend income. Yeah. Oh. Okay, call it half. Let's just say. Okay. Don't forget. Even though it's going into our corporation? Well, I talked to an accountant about that. Okay. okay. So okay. <laughs> just in, in theory though, yeah. right? It's great in cash flow, but don't forget you're losing out on uh, inflation. Yeah. At the end of the day. Yeah, 100%. You know, so say you invest 100 grand into it, mm -hmm. right? You're going to get 11 grand at the end of the year, which will be like, what? Call it just under $1,000 a month for yeah. cash flow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that $1,000 is not going to buy you much. And meanwhile, that 100000 you get back mm -hmm. eventually will be worth more, less, less, and less, less. Yeah, less yeah actually, you're right. Year I didn't year. even think so about that. Don't get me that. wrong. It's good for yeah. cash flow. So if you put, I don't know, 500,000, a million bucks into it, mm -hmm. right? If you got 10 grand a month in income, that's pretty good to like, you yeah. know, mm -hmm. do your lifestyle, yeah. right? So the way I look at it is that I wouldn't do private lending unless you have millions. Right. Oh, wow. Well, I think the reason that we're doing it is like, like it's just rather than it being sitting in our account doing nothing. I yeah. yeah. I agree. Right? I agree. We're we do just don't want it to be a good long term strategy. And then, and then buy something else. I think I absolutely yeah. agree. Yeah. absolutely agree. It's yeah. just you lose the taxes and inflation. That's the only mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. So, just be cautious of that. If it's just extra money and it's just kind of like um, like a diversifying and, and having extra income come in. Yeah. Cash yeah. Flow. Because yeah. If, the theory is that if you have enough um, as a dividend income coming in and it supports your lifestyle, Mm. then that's really yeah yeah that's rich that. if you I was think like, about wow, it if we can just stack hundreds of that like each time a hundred thousand like boom 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 we and can then just like, like can just, just coast live. it <laughs> what's well, it right like even the rich dad poor dad he talks yeah. about that right the yeah. way to make money is when the, the definition make your of money rich, make money mm -hmm. yeah yeah and also the definition of rich is that when your assets are make more money than your liabilities yeah yeah yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. so your liabilities such as rent such as car payments yes. whatever mm -hmm. food clothing entertainment all that stuff if that dividend income coming in, your sleeping money, like when you're sleeping, you make yeah. money sleep. Yeah, yeah. That is more. Then than you're that. winning. How much then more do you need? Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Right. No. Mm -hmm. So that's my goal. My goal is to build my net worth through real estate, through leverage. Yeah. To be able to one day cash out of everything and live off the dividend income. I love that. Mm -hmm. Okay, makes sense. So I wouldn't do it at my level now because I don't have enough cash to sustain my lifestyle because it's pretty expensive to live yeah. how I live and support everybody and turn the lights on. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, I, I I just it's good just. Be cautious of that. So okay. the reason why I like real estate is because you can use leverage. You can use bank OPM. You can use other people's money through the bank money, mortgages. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Appreciation. Yeah, that is other people's money. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Debt yeah. pay down. Yeah. Your mortgage is being paid down over 25 or 30 years, whatever the right. amortization level is. Because guaranteed at 25 years or 30 years, whatever you pick, it'll be paid to zero. Yeah. Right? yeah. That's the whole definition yeah. of amortization. Yeah. And then you can create that generational wealth. Mm hmm. But it takes time. 25, 30 years is a long time. It's yeah. quick, but it's also long. Yeah. Right? And at the same time, you get rental income, so the tenant's paying that off. Mm -hmm. Right? And then also on top of that, you have cash flow. Eventually, the, the rents will, you know, as rents, as you know, always appreciate, right? Yeah. Like mm -hmm. when tenants move out, you go to market rent, and all of a sudden, you can't believe it now, like year over year, it's 20% rent increases. I know, I just showed yeah. the like yeah. units last night, two bedroom. Wild. Ridiculous. Like 3,500. 3, yeah, yeah, exactly. One bedroom. 2800 on average now that's gross right you know oh, so my uh, and it's so funny because i uh, like i was actually panicking a little bit about the condo that we bought because i yeah. was like damn like our mortgage <laughs> is going to be a lot plus plus maintenance fees but like with the rents yeah it's going to be built by yeah. 24 that, that, like i think we'll, we'll we'll probably be cash flow negative but like not not a disgusting amount. Yeah, yeah. But then, yeah. But the next but, tenant, the rent will exactly, go up. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. So like, wait, I have another question. Yeah, sure. So like, 
right now with the way interest rates are um, and property prices have gone down, but like imagine well, they'll definitely go back up eventually, mm-hmm. but like how soon that gonna, is going to happen. Do you think that you ke- like when you're looking at a property to buy that you're not going to live in, that you're going to rent out, do you think it's possible? Like, do you know what I mean? Like how long you should, should you be forecasting that you're going to be in the negative? So before it's like an unwise choice. Um, you're not really in the negative because you, you're you got to factor of the principal equity. pay down. The principal pay down. You, right. So approximately half of your mortgage payment, like it, it, it dep- in the beginning parts is you're paying way more interest than your principal, but a portion of your payments will still always be principal if you're amortizing it down. To right. Zero, unless you're doing an interest only payment. So I guess you can, another way to look at it is that if you calculate interest only payments, like you say, you got a line of credit, mm-hmm. right? Plus your maintenance mm-hmm. fees, plus your taxes, plus your insurance, maybe yeah. some heating, whatever you have. So P I T M principal, Principal, interest, taxes, maintenance. Yeah. Okay. The ITM portion <clears throat> is what goes away. Like that is just gone just because you got to pay it. Right. You don't get it. Mm-hmm. Okay. I see what you're saying. Yeah, you get yeah, back. Yeah. Yeah. So everybody says you're in the negative, cash flow negative, $700 negative, whatever. Yeah. What if you're paying down $1,000 a month? Right. It's almost like forced savings, you know? And yeah, eventually, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. it won't be $700 a month negative. Eventually, it'll be $500 negative. And then eventually $200. And then eventually, okay. Positive, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And also, it'll appreciate at the same time. Right. Exactly. So, yeah. It, okay. It, you got to look at each scenario differently, but like, mm-hmm. just know, like, yes, cash flow is a very real thing. I get it, right? Because yeah. you still got to make that mortgage payment, yeah. mm-hmm. even though you're negative seven hundred dollars. So just leave a chunk of change in there. Leave th- twenty, thirty, forty grand in there in the right. bank account. Mm-hmm. And let it draw down, right? Right. And because eventually it will come back. Right. Period. 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 <laughs> Period. <laughs> yeah. And then when yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and then when then when you're able to refinance it, take some money out, and it's still kind of like break even or getting a little negative do it again, right? Okay. That's yeah. how people get wealthy in real estate. Mm. Mm-hmm. Love that. Yeah. Funny enough, Learning I think the lots. podcast just before <laughs> this one that's going to be released yeah. talks about this. Really? So, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Who's it with? Uh, Michael, it's someone in our team. So, oh, mm-hmm. nice. Yeah. Nice, nice, Talk about nice. four ways to make money in real estate, which is Ooh. those things, right? So. Nice. Yeah. Um, what else did we want to talk about? Yeah, what else, what, what, what else was on our where's list? Your list? <laughs> yeah, where's our list? <sighs> okay. I think that was like our, that was like our really just like one question. What? What happens yeah. if it's net cash on negative? No, it was um, like how to make money in real estate, not using our own money. I think that unless some. Well, okay. So I have, um, for example, I've had some partnerships <clears throat> where I'm doing all the work. Right. Right. And mm-hmm. they're the ones putting up the capital. Yeah. Right. Cause they have more, they make money. Right. And they got more money. Than they have time and expertise and they're in a different industry. Mm-hmm. So here I am as a real estate expert, and I do this day in and day out. So I'm guiding them through it, managing the tenants, improving the property, just managing the whole thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? So I'll take a portion of equity out of that. I right. put a little bit of money into the game, so I have skin in the game, so I could show them that, listen, like that, I do care about this as well, too. Yeah, yeah. Not just the regular whatever, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's how I can make money on other people's money, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, that does make sense. Yeah. Sweat equity. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? So again, if you're just starting out, you got to get somebody to trust you to do that. Yes. So say yes. you're doing a fix and flip, for example. It's basic, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Somebody will inject all the capital, pay for it all, expect a certain amount of return. Mm-hmm. And the most basic way you can do it is that they get their in, uh, initial investment back. So say they put a million bucks into your investment, they get their um, a million bucks back, and then you mm-hmm. split the profit from there. Yeah. Right. That's how you can do it. I mean, that's yeah. a pretty sweet deal on their end. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. they're not yeah. doing anything, and they get a profit. Yeah. But what if you don't? What if you don't yeah. make a profit? What if it's a market like today and then it dropped? Mm-hmm. Right? Ooh, and that's scary. Sweating. So that's what I mean. Yeah. That's, that's why it's super scary with other people's money because now they're thinking, you owe me a million bucks. Yeah, people mm-hmm. die yeah. over that. That's what yeah. I mean. Literally. That's exactly <laughs> what I mean. Yeah. So yeah. Wow. I would say treat other people's money way more than you, better than you treat yours. Yeah. Yes. If you can work with your own money because if you end up knocking wood, you lose money. Mm-hmm. Then it's your money, you can just sweat it out. You can yeah, wait it out. Yeah. You can wait till next year, whatever you do, yeah. right? Like, but you don't have anybody breathing over your back. Mm-hmm. So one step at a time. Definitely. Patience. Yeah. yeah. Patience. Yeah. <laughs> Patience. Yeah. So would you say like us flipping a condo would be a good thing in this market or no? I don't like flipping personally, generally at all. Okay. Really? I don't because you lose it to, to costs. There's land transfer taxes when you buy. There's yeah. realtor fees right, when yeah, you yeah, sell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's oh. a mortgage <laughs> penalty break, like you know, when you break a mortgage, for example. Yeah. What right? is breaking a mortgage? I don't know. Well, terminating early, and ending it early. So there's oh, something called the IRD, early. which is interest rate differential if you're on a fixed mortgage, which 
the bank's idea is that they lent you money at this much. They expect a certain profit of this much. You're ending the okay. term early, so pay a penalty. Pay yeah. a bit of that profit. Oh, up, wow. Right? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. So mm -hmm. even for variable, there's, there's like three-month interest penalty and things like that, right? Depending on which bank. Sometimes okay. it would be lenders yeah. is a little higher. Mm -hmm. So um, even like your private mortgages, for example, there's a lender fee that gets added to that. Like that might yeah, go to the person, right? Yeah. So, but um, like there's there's fees for all that stuff and it just adds up. So I don't like flipping because yes, Unless you might it was make like, a quick profit yeah. and it might keep you happy for a little bit, but then now you got to go find another deal. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And how do you know what you're buying is like, if you sold it high, you can also buy high too. How are you going to yeah. find the next deal? Mm -hmm. Versus keeping the property and instead of selling it, rent it out, take out like 80% of the equity, leave 20% behind. Mm -hmm. And there's your profit. You can go spend that money or reinvest that money. Right. And you still get to yeah. maintain that property. And over time, it'll pay itself yeah. off. Right. Rents will go up. And that's the burn method in a nutshell. Okay. Right. Yeah. 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 It's just, there's like so many options these days. There's so many options for yeah. what you can do. And we just keep wondering like, what is like the next set? Like, what do we do yeah, now? What, like, mm -hmm. what do we do? Be our advisor to and tell us what to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But I what? mean, yeah, sorry. Well, I think for us, like realistically, like the next thing that we would probably do is it's well, just what you're talking about. Just like buying a house, like a house somewhere here. Yeah. Right. I think yeah. ideally and, it would be a house that we could live in the top and rent the basement. Yeah. That's really that would be like. so You know, the ideal. biggest thing right now is yeah. garden suites, right? Like garden suites and laneway suites. Yeah. If you get a big enough lot that you're able to build. Oh, a, a like in Vancouver. Here. That's what granddad's neighbors did. Yeah. Like, they built a house in the back. Because they, got, yeah, they yeah. got the permission to do that way before Toronto did. But yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah, Vancouver yeah. has it. LA has it. And I think LA you can do four units. So you can do Whoa. two units in the main and two units in the back. Wow. Or whatever. Really? So accessory dwelling units is another way to say garden suite. ADUs. Yeah. Right. You might hear that term a lot in the States. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. That's also a good thing. I mean, it's not going to be wow. cheap. You're basically like buying another property on your yeah. own. Yeah, right? on so your you still, own. You gotta build it. It's still like, it's still like yeah. half a million or yeah. whatever it is to yeah. build, right? So it's still, but eventually you can do that. If you own the land, you can do that. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. Right, so maybe that's the next thing you look at. That would be cool. Yeah, that would be really we cool. We could just ultimately, convince granddad. <laughs> yeah, ultimately just you have to the shed. Shed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think at the end of the day, you have to increase density. That's that's the real way okay. to make money, yeah. really. Okay. Add more square footage. Okay. Easiest more square way. footage. Mm -hmm. So that's our next step. Yeah, well we don't, well, yeah. But you need assets. No, to I was just it. no. I was thinking. I was like, yeah, it, exactly, right. That's that's why you I'm like the next step is get get like saw an actual lot. Yes, because it, yeah. you can't increase anything on, on, on what we ha what we own already on yeah. a condo. Yeah. The, the good thing about right? condos, yeah. and I started my investing career through condos, right? Yeah, because it, it grows in equity. It's an asset at the end of the day through rich I poor assets. Yeah, yeah. Abilities, exactly. Right? Yeah, and we'll hold on to that condo for, for a long, for a long, a long, long time. Yeah, rent if you're a tenant. I'd rather live in a nice brand new condo with amenities, concierge, yeah. water, transit, mm -hmm. and good locations. Prime rather location. than some it's like, a great location. Right? Rather mm -hmm. than some like dinky basement somewhere. Exactly. You know what I mean? yeah. Like some moldy basement. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's not fun. Yeah. yeah. So um, you always have tenants. You'll pay uh, higher paying tenants. Now there is a market for those people, right? Like, cause it is cheaper to live in a moldy basement, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's just a lot more headaches as a landlord person. No, that location yeah. is prime. I'm sure, I it's don't think perfect. we're going to have any trouble finding I really a good don't. Don't. Yeah. quality And tenant. as it appreciates, you can just refinance it. Then you can like you move it to other things, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Other mm -hmm. investments, get a few more condos. Yeah. And then you start yeah. diversifying yourself by having more properties. Yeah. Yeah. That's so what we get that's... like you. <laughs> so we can't get like you. It's patience. Yeah. Patience. I'm telling you. Yeah. Patience, grasshopper. Patience. <laughs> what's on, what's on? No. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So tell me about you guys, TikTok. What's happening? Like, where's that? How do you come up with the creativity and all this? Like, isn't another It's all like, okay. It's all Where do you get these trends mind. from? Well, okay. So first of all, I did go to school for marketing. That's oh, why I yes. did go to school for marketing. And then uh, when Kamaya was doing her acting stuff, I did social media for a few different companies. Mm. Like not anything big. I actually took like really low paying jobs just so we could be on set together because mm. Kamaya was a minor. So we had mm. to be on set. Um, so like I do have a little bit of background on social media. Um but like also it's just fun. It's yeah. fun. Right? So we, fun. We genuinely just enjoy it. Like I'll call mama over and I'll be like, mama, this is a really good TikTok idea. And then we'll literally just do it. Like it's, yeah. It's, yeah. it's just looked at something that's like fun. It's fun. And then when and we we're realized, to, okay, wait. we can actually like even Siobhan, for example, mm -hmm. like seeing him and like he, if, if the way I look at it, if somebody else is doing it, why can't you? Yeah. Right. right? As exactly. long as you put in the work and like you mm -hmm. follow the blueprint that's already laid out, as like well. your blueprint, yeah. we're trying to follow you. Like sure. you just take mm -hmm. somebody's blueprint and you follow it. Mm -hmm. So for us, like TikTok, I'm like, okay, these people, you can easily make like 20K a yeah. month. Yeah. If we can add 20K a month what, to our TikTok? income. 
Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's right in front of a lot of people and no one takes the opportunity. Okay, how? <laughs> tell them how. No, you tell. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't done it yet, Ken. Okay, okay. we're just, we're trying no, to get okay, there. So we've, we've, I, we've done two sponsors now. Yes. Okay. But we got paid pretty yeah. little, but I took... I took the little pay because I was like, okay, I need to learn first of all, how to communicate with the brands as myself sure. um, and just like do all that. So it's kind of like there's value in that versus the pay. Mm-hmm. But let's say you do like, I don't know, two sponsorships a week, mm. right? Mm-hmm. And you're getting X amount of dollars. You can Eas- you easily oh, yeah. make that money through sponsorships. Mm-hmm. So like right now we've made a media kit and we've started, Amoy is the person that researches the brands that we're going to yeah. work with. She I finds the emails, the e- email. <laughs> she puts it into a spreadsheet and then she sends it to me and then I email them. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Kamaya looks pretty yeah. in all of this. Kamaya, as soon as Kamaya's in that TikTok, we get the views anyway. So yeah. nice. What? <laughs> nice, nice. So, okay. Content creation, get mm-hmm. the views, get the audience, get the following, yeah. get attract sponsors mm-hmm. yes. sponsorship money and then also there's tiktok money or whatever you get yeah. from views and stuff right no in canada you don't get those okay well on youtube you have that at least i have put a pin in my youtube a pin yeah i'm not doing youtube anymore why because honestly like with my real estate stuff like i just feel like i'm too busy too i don't busy. have time yeah. like long form video mm-hmm. is too long yeah. Yeah. tiktok it it's you actually do better on tiktok if you look bad it's true Right. Like if you're just in pajamas. It's more. Yeah. Yeah. Funny enough, actually, well, I'm doing a course. So I'm doing course revenue. So I'm going to be doing a course on how to create videos and things like that. Okay, nice. For real estate agents, especially on how to create podcasts. Oh, that's really cool. Okay. Okay. You know, I was like, I'm hiring this guy from Ukraine. He's a Ukraine refugee at the end Mm -hmm. of the day. And it's more so that, first of all, it's kind of charity giving somebody a new life. Yeah. Yeah. But like, how do I support him? You know, it's another salary for no reason at all. I don't need another media person. So I was like, why don't you just create a course? So that's what I'm doing. Same kind of idea. It's going to be, um, first of all, starting on videography stuff. But uh, yeah, YouTube stuff is just, it's so time intensive. You're right. To research it. It really is. And one of the the modules in that course is basically authentic, like using your iPhone versus like one of these. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. People trust, I feel, they trust iPhones more than they Mm -hmm. trust. Yeah. Because when it's too polished, it looks bad. Like sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. People don't trust. People don't. Yeah. Yeah. Especially with like, as the general, as like years get younger, they, they want to see real. Yeah, like a shaky hair. iPhone. And like, like, like production. Like, <laughs> yeah. oh, you had a thought? Okay, let's record mm-hmm. this. Yeah, right. they yeah. really exactly. do, do a lot better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel yeah. like it's showing up to the first meeting in suit and tie. And it's like, whoa, what's going on with you? Yeah. 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 Show up a witness yeah. or something. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, what are you trying to sell me, right? <laughs> Versus showing up and just casual, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And it's different, right? So yeah. I guess. Totally. Yeah. yeah. That's and awesome. that, that's so, the yeah. great thing about TikTok. It's just like, yeah. Just turn the camera on, say something funny. We got to. So. Again, no, we do have a strategy. Like, we do have good. a whole strategy. Yeah, because yeah. like it's all about the storyline yeah. and what you're selling. Exactly. Yeah. Like, totally. You can't just create out of nowhere. It's not just. Yeah. 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 No, we have a really strong brand, mm-hmm. and I think like that's why we're all here today. Is like, mm-hmm. yeah, we family is our brand. Family. Yeah. Yeah. Family is like yeah, at the core of everything that we do, <laughs> and um, and then like just, everything else kind of like flows off of family. Yeah. 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 Cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. Well, I'm excited. Thank you for joining us in this podcast. Yeah, it's great. Course. It's fun. Um, looking forward to do more and yes. uh, talk more about real estate. So anytime you have questions, yeah. let's talk. Yeah. Thank, yeah. You. Thank you so Thank much, Ken. Thank you us. so much. Oh, wait, wait. Before we do that, okay. how can I follow you? Instagram, TikTok, whatever. Oh, okay. Cool. Ooh, okay. okay. Plug. TikTok. What's our plug? Go. Okay. So TikTok is Michelle Fairburn and my Instagram is also Michelle oh. Fairburn. <laughs> my Instagram is Kamaya Fairburn and uh, my Instagram is Amoy Fairburn. How do you spell the Amoy? A M O I. That's right. And then Kamaya, K A M A I A. And then awesome. Michelle. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and your Netflix specials, you can always watch. Netflix oh, movies. yes. Oh, yeah, we didn't talk My about Netflix that. show is coming out November 3rd, so you better watch. watch. Blockbuster. I will. Yeah. I can't wait to see it. Give it a Yeah. 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 Play yeah. it yeah. nonstop. So Just we have background two. noise. Yeah. <laughs> we need the ratings, guys. Let's bring it in, okay? <laughs> cool. Thanks for watching, guys. Yeah, thank, thank you. Bye. Oh, that was so much fun. Add it up.